For those who don't know me, my name is Father Mark Bernhard, and I had the honor of serving with Father Don, living with him here at Our Lady of Mercy for three years, 2017 to 2020. I told Father Don that if he died before me, that he could put in his will that I would get the dogs. <laughs> I, pro I promised him that I would take extremely good care of them. His response to that, every time I said it, and I said it many times, his response every time was the same thing. He says, if I found out that you had my dog, I would come back and haunt you so bad. Needless to say, his will did not indicate me having his dog. <laughs> Earlier this week, I found myself scrolling through my text messages that Father Don has sent me. Text messages went back for whatever reason. I don't know when it stopped or why it stopped when it did, but it went all the way back to June 11th, 2018. So it was right towards the end of my first year with him. Here are the first five text messages in order consecutively that he sent that showed up on my phone beginning on June 11th. I'm throwing a small party for someone's birthday Thursday. You don't have any plans, join for food. The cheeseburger emoji, chicken wing emoji, <laughs> and a salad emoji. <laughs> I don't know who he was kidding with the salad emoji. <laughs> June 17th, do you want any raspberries or blackberries? June 19th, you want me to bring you some grilled chicken? <laughs> it looks good. June 22nd, next text, chocolate chip cookie dough or peanut butter cookie dough? <laughs> And then lastly, do you want anything from Subway? <laughs> you may think, man, this shows that Father Don talked about food a lot. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> You'd be right. But what it really shows is he always wanted to make sure I was taken care of. Father Don cared for people in a way no one else cared for people. I felt that from the first day that I met Father Don, and I think it's the same experience everybody had with Father Don. He was a priest, a man, who really cared for people. He loved people. He'd always bring gifts to my nieces and nephews when he'd come over to my parents' house uh, over on Christmas and Easter. The gifts that he would bring over for my nephews and niece would always be better gifts than I got them. <laughs> That's just who he was. He cared for tens of thousands of people throughout his life. He cared for them in a way nobody else could. In the gospel we just heard, Jesus gives an invitation. He says, all who are burdened, all who are labored, tired, anxious, confused, says, come to me, and I'll give you rest. Learn from me, for I am meek, humble of heart. You will find rest for yourselves. To be around Father Don was to learn to be at rest. He had a way of just putting people at ease. I met Father Don when we both got assigned here at Our Lady of Mercy. He was coming here as a, as, a, as a seasoned priest on his last assignment. And I was coming here as a new priest on my first assignment. And I was coming to Father Don burdened, anxious, worried about learning on how to be a priest. Over and over again, he was able to put me at rest, put me at ease. I found peace in him. 
Countless people came to Father Don over the years the same way I came to him. Burdened, anxious, worried, confused. And as he counseled them, absolved their sins, nursed them with the Eucharist, or even when he just sat with them, he was able to give countless people peace, rest, ease. Why was that? Certainly because he was childlike. Anyone who knows him knows that you could just be yourself around him. He was fun, which came off by his horribly corny jokes or wearing mismatched socks. But the real reason he was able to put you at ease was because he was meek and humble. Maybe the most meek and humble man I ever met. Note that this is how, those are the two words Jesus describes, Jesus describes himself, meek and humble. Father Don had the heart of Christ. Because of that, to go to Father Don, you were going to Christ. That's the mark of a good priest. St. John, St. John Vianney once said, the priest must be full of love, patience, and understanding especially towards those who, who, are, who struggle and are weak. I don't know if you could sum up Father Don as a priest any better than that. He was full of love, patient, he was understanding. And he especially had a heart for those who are weak, struggling. With praying with these readings, thinking about what Father Don might want to say tonight, I think it's this, I know it's this. Allow yourself to be tapped into your weakness right now. As you sit here right now, allow yourself to be tapped into your weakness. Become aware right now of all your struggles. Notice the areas of your heart tonight where you're burdened, you're tired, you're worried, you're confused. And in that spot, hear the invitation that Christ extends to you at this very moment right now. To simply come to me, he says. Surrender to me. If you haven't fully given your life away to me, do it now. Give your life to Jesus right now. The way Father Don the way Father Don did. And then we can all turn out to a broken world and extend this invitation of Christ all the time, just through our person, just the way Father Don did.